you all for coming and welcome. We really, really appreciate your patience. We uh, didn't expect to have such a great, a great response to this event, so we booked a theater that was smaller than we should have, but thank you for helping us accommodate everyone else in the other theater. My name is Gwyneth Dolan, and I'm the moderator today. Um, I'd like to introduce our debaters. We have Senator Sue Wilson Beffert of Sandia Park. <laughs> Representative Brian Egolf of Santa Fe. <laughs> Representative Dennis Kintai of Roswell. <laughs> Keep it down. And Representative Janice Arnold Jones of Albuquerque. The purpose of this event is to have a um, thoughtful and interactive discussion of how we deal with film policy in New Mexico. And it's interactive. You've all got uh, index cards that you've been handed out, and we have collected a bunch of your questions already. Please write them down, borrow a pen, ask your neighbor. And Lynette over there in the white shirt has the fish bowl for your questions. And uh, we'll be choosing some of them for the second part of the debate. I would like to introduce you now to um, Paul Guessing of the Rio Grande Foundation and Eric Witt of the New Mexico Motion Picture Association, who are the sponsors of today's debate. Thank you. The Rio Grande Foundation is New Mexico's only fiscally conservative think tank. Decades of experience have shown economists that fair, low, and simple taxes are most effective in driving economic growth. Unfortunately, New Mexico's film subsidies violate this fairness principle. Under the program, tax dollars are taken from single moms trying to get their kids into better schools and small businessmen who are attempting to get their companies off the ground. Those do tax dollars are then given directly to one favorite industry, the film industry. This is not only unfair, but in my view, it is both poor economics and morally dubious. While the Rio Grande Foundation has always had concerns about the film program, the state's $400 million deficit and the need to balance the budget gives the issue an urgency it has previously not had. Thank you for coming, and I look forward to an enlightening and vigorous debate on the issue. Thank you. called morally dubious by better people than that. <laughs> um, the film industry has without question been the single most successful economic development and jobs creation effort in the state in, in recent years, if not decades. Uh, the reason <laughs> we didn't choose this business because uh, we like making movies. We chose it because it has the effect that you see here today. Thousands of people working in this business, helping those small startup businesses get up and running. <laughs> Paul, in fact, Paul and I have a lot more in common than you may think. I'm very uh, fiscally conservative myself. I come out of an MBA background. I'm a finance guy. This business works for New Mexico, bottom line. You get more money. Uh, in, then you pay out, were you to eliminate the industry, you wouldn't have as much money for We talk about the deficit. deficit. Guess what? You'd have less money to spend. Less money to spend on child care. So I agree that we need to, uh, we need to be fiscally responsible and I uh, look forward to the debate. Thank all the debaters for being here. that there are some supporters in the audience. <laughs> I'd like to ask you to help me out here and please uh, keep your applause and cheers to a minimum no matter what side you're on. We uh, started really late and we want to get through as many questions as possible and as many of your questions as possible. And we want to make sure that this is an environment where everybody feels good being heard and that we're all listening and not spending all our time clapping. So please help me keep it down, and uh, please be respectful, everyone, and we will uh, 
get into this discussion. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the ground rules. The way that we've got this organized, uh, well, I'll ask a question and we've drawn a lottery. We have an order that the, the questions will be posed in and then I'll allow 30 seconds for everyone else to respond if they choose. Um, and then we'll move on to the next question. We'll do that for about 30 minutes. And then we will ask uh, some of your questions from the fishbowl for about 15 minutes. Uh, so I, I want to keep us on that schedule as much as possible. Um, so let's start with the first question. And this is an easy one. This is going to be for you, Representative Kintai. Um, why should we give the Oh, opening statements. I'm sorry, you're right. We're going to do opening statements first, and we'll go in this order. So, Representative Kintai, you have one minute for your opening statement here. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Gwyneth. Thank, thank you for this. Thank you, Doug, Eric, Paul, for putting on. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for participating, folks out there in the audience. I'm Dennis Kintai. I'm the bad guy in this movie. That's <laughs> right. The vile villain, the Darth Vader, if you will. I'm the guy who asks questions. That are, that are not supposed to be asked. But that's what I've done for a long time. I ask questions, I ask hard ones, because that's how you get to the truth. Truth that might not be popular, might not be pleasant, but it's truth. The truth of the matter is, this is bad economic policy. This hurts the citizens of New Mexico. And I've been on a crusade for a couple years now to try and get that message out, because I believe fundamentally this is wrong. The facts are there to show it. Hopefully tonight you'll hear some facts. I thank you for putting this on. And now for an opening statement, Senator Beffert. Thank you. And thank uh, everyone in the audience for your interest in this issue. And I consider this upcoming session probably the most serious uh, that we have had, even though we've had other budget uh, years. Thank you for putting this on top of my notes. <laughs> say, uh, many of you know that I'm a former business person. I like all the other tax credits. I like all the other rebates and things. This is the only industry that's being targeted right now. And this has the largest sustained growth since our recession hit. So um, it's a very, very uh, intricate web that we have. And when you say tighten up or just lower a little bit, um, uh, there are unintended consequences. And I would be uh, interested in talking about that this afternoon. Thank you. Good. Representative Arnold Jones. You can yell at me and throw everything. I don't have a vote this coming session, so let's have a discussion. <laughs> you know, from a tax policy perspective, this is terrible policy. However, it is not irrecoverable. I have always thought that the definitions were way too, too narrow. The media is expanding exponentially. And unfortunately, we've kind of limited some pieces of it. Now, as a business uh, manager myself, the 25% credit against expenses, there are no taxes involved, a little hard to swallow. So is there some middle ground? I think there is. I absolutely think, and, and you're looking at me like there are no taxes. There are no taxes involved. It is a credit against expenses. And that is where the tax policy really gets to be a problem. So let's see if we can find some middle ground that sustains an industry. I'd like to see a really strong production model. Thank you. Representative Eagle. Thanks. Thank you to the sponsors. I'm happy to be here. New Mexico is blessed, and truly in this economy blessed, to have a vibrant industry that has created great, good-paying jobs that cannot be outsourced and that are clean. And this program is the envy of dozens of our sister states. <coughs> We're going to hear a lot of attacks tonight, uh, this afternoon, against the film program. The attacks are really based in ignorance. People that don't understand what this program is, what it was meant for, how it works, or what it does and the effect it has in every community in the state. Instead of looking at this program, uh, I'm sorry, instead of looking at all the other programs that send $400 million to dirty industries, including oil and gas, potash and coal, this industry has been targeted unfairly 
and the arguments that have been made in terms of auditing and other things are completely out of line and out of place because this is the only incentive program in the history of the state of New Mexico that has been repeatedly audited and shown to have created jobs and made money for New Mexico. This is the only one to kill it now with short-sighted and bad policy. Now we will start with the first question to Representative Kinsey, start with a full start. Okay. <laughs> so as some of you mentioned in your opening statements, the film program has um, extensive reporting requirements and every film that receives the uh, rebates is audited. Do you think that if we're gonna do this, if we're gonna do this for the film industry, should we increase the reporting requirements for other industries that receive credits and rebates? Should we expand the reporting and accountability across industries? Well, Gwyneth, I'll, I'll disagree with your first base point there. This, the, the audits that you're talking about don't exist. In 2009, when I made, sent letters to Tax and Revenue asking for specific information on the payments to the various film industries, I was told I could not have access to the to the claims that were submitted because they were considered taxpayer ID. Only, the only thing that the Tax and Revenue Department would provide to me was a listing. Over a time period, there were 72 different payments made. 72 payments, the date of the check, and the amount of the check. That is the only information that would release me. I then went to the PRC website. One third of those companies that received checks in the rebate program were not listed on the PRC website. One third were out of state corporations. Only one third were New Mexico companies. We don't know where this money is going. It's shrouded in secrecy. So first, we need to open this up for transparency. Thank you. Senator Beffer, you have 30 seconds to respond, and then uh, each of the rest of you will have 30 seconds. Well, I guess uh, I certainly understand uh, that we want uh, accountability and transparency and so on. But I go back to the issue of the over a billion other tax rebates and other uh, uh, issues that we deal with with other industries. And right now, what I'm dealing with in Santa Fe as a finance committee member is 89,000 unemployed people. Mm -hmm. And so my time is up. I'm saying that this is our bright star, and it worries me that we would juggle it and, and possibly change it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now we go to Representative Arnold Jones. Yeah, 30 we're seconds. We're talking about the credits against expenses and the auditing requirements. Mm -hmm. Representative Kintai is correct. You cannot see those audits. However, increasing more audits, you know, increasing the bureaucracy is not going to help us. What we have to do is simplify the process. So if we were actually talking about a tax that could be audited, you could actually simplify the amount of resources spent by each film production entity significantly. Simplify, simplify. Thank you. Representative Egolf, 30 seconds. Bring more accountability to oil, gas, coal, and, and potash, absolutely. How can we be giving away $400 million a year? And many of these tax loopholes that have been placed in our tax code by special interest lobbyists, Many of these are exemptions from the gross receipts tax. What that means is that unlike deductions, where the income is reported and then you deduct it from the total before you pay the tax, these exemptions are never even reported in the first place. And this has been going on for decades in favored industries. And if you want to talk about a favored industry, uh, according to most of the, in the state legislature over the last uh, decades, it certainly hasn't been filmed. It's been oil, gas, and the other industries that have gotten $400 million <coughs> giveaways of your money. Thank you. I'm going to start cutting you guys off if you go on in 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. The second question here will go to Senator Beffert, and we're going to continue in this order. Senator, the rebate right now is not capped. Uh, Governor Martinez has proposed capping the program. Part of uh, the criticism of not having a cap is that we don't know exactly how much we're going to refund from year to year. Should we cap the, the program. You have one minute. Uh, it's my recollection that California put a cap on their program and what that means is that you have the different uh, companies that come and get in line 
and uh, you approve a couple because it uh, approaches the cap. All the others, fortunately for us, left the state and came here into other wonderful states. Uh, so uh, I go back to the issue of uh, here we are trying to climb out of this recession, and this is not the proper time to start saying let's cap or let's lower the percentage. By the way, uh, New Mexico is dying. <coughs> in line in terms of the handsome nature of our film industry. Uh, I think that we are blessed to have uh, the wonderful movies that excites me every time I see and my wrap up uh, card is here. Uh, but capping I think would be even more injurious to the industry than any other type of adjustment. Thank you. Representative Arnold Jones, you have 30 seconds. I don't like the first come first serve aspect of it because it really cuts out New Mexico filmmakers. I don't like that part. The other side is the mantra will be we need to put money into education. Where is the money going to come from? And so at some point you have to have a very realistic view of your budget. And I'm hesitant to say put a cap on it, but if it means pulling 50 million out of education, what do you choose? Representative Eagle. Over the history of the film program, the Texas Revenue Department has been incredibly precise in the estimates of what the film uh, rebate is going to cost within a uh, million dollars or so each year. So we're already at a predictable level uh, in terms of knowing what we're going to be spending in the year ahead. So there's not a problem of, of uncertainty. Uh, in fact, a year ago they were within uh, half a million dollars. But more importantly, and this is a decision that would be made by any business, if you have a growing profit center, that is producing results for your company, why would you limit it? it Thank doesn't you. Make any sense. Thank you. We're going to move on. Help me move this along smoothly. Uh, Representative Kintai, 30 seconds. My understanding is the governor is actually proposing a reduction of percentage of the cap. And the problem with the cap is, as everyone has mentioned here, it's brought on because, I'll disagree with Representative Egoff, LFC has not been able to predict what it would go. To, we don't know how much we're going to spend from year to year. It fluctuates. It's gone from 47 to 75 to 62. The cap is better than nothing, but we are pouring money. We are bleeding money. We've got to stop it. Thank you. We're going to move on to the next question. And this will go to Representative Arnold Jones. If 20 other states have programs, 29, we have some debates over whose programs are more generous than ours, but if other states have programs that are more generous than ours and we're still attracting business, why should we not cut it a little bit? Shoot. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of an interesting way to ask that question. You know, if 20 other states have a program like this, and I will tell you, I argued this the time it came up in 2003, there comes a point at which you cannot sell off of the rate card. And that is the race that you are proposing, is keeping up with all of the other states. At some point, we have to sell the value in the state of New Mexico and not worry what everybody else is doing. I have so much faith in the talent in this state that I don't care if Wisconsin gives 40%. We have a better film climate, and that's what we have to sell. And we will still get the jobs. Thank you. Um, Representative Eagle. You have 30 seconds. The reason we don't want to cut is the people in this room and the 12,000 other people that are dependent upon this industry for their jobs and their mortgage payments and their car payments. Yeah. Movies, contrary to public, uh, to widespread belief, are operating on very slim profit margins. So the amount of the rebate is huge, but also we've got the base. We've spent a decade investing in the post-production, in the people behind the camera, all those kids going to high school to learn how to work in this industry, they are here. Right. And that is a huge benefit for us, but it also depends on the financing decisions that these studios make. That's why we need to keep the rebate exactly as it is. Thank you. Uh, Representative Kintai? I believe it's time to start reevaluating. Other states are doing it. Kansas, Iowa, and New Jersey have all suspended their program. Rhode Island has capped it. And Arizona has let their program expire. It's time to do more than just suspend it. We need to get the Thank you. <clears throat> Representative Egolf, I know you took your glasses off, but there are two ladies sitting up here with little cards. 
<laughs> and they indicate when your time is running now. That's why I took my glasses off. <laughs> Um, so, next question, and this one is. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator. Forgive me. Women have to speak up. Yeah. You know, I want to go back to the original premise of cost versus um, expenditure. If we gave $135 million worth of tax credits, that means that our budget got $504 million for education and uh, fortunately so that we don't have more unemployed people that uh, That's right. are sitting with no jobs. So, you know, it's all uh, relative when you talk about the program uh, and what the costs are. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Now for the next question. Uh, this one will go to Representative Barney Jones first. Did I ask you first last time? All right, Representative Eagle first, then. We have a serious budget deficit in the state, and we know that we have to make cuts coming into the next legislative session. If we don't cut this program, where would you suggest we cut? Uh, well, that's pretty easy. Uh, I would propose that we make an across-the-board 1% cut in the overall gross receipts tax for every New Mexican and pay for it by a reduction of 80% of all of the loopholes and tax credits and exemptions and deductions that go to the industries of the past that no longer need a subsidy. And I mentioned those industries already. That's one. Two, we can, I, I disagree with the premise that we need to have further and deeper cuts. There are some places that we can save. We've already cut $800 million out of the state budget over the last two years. People seem to forget that. We have fewer state employees now than when Bill Richardson took office. We are a much smaller state government. And there are some common sense measures like making Best Buy and Walmart pay New Mexico's corporate tax, just like a Mexico-based company. Uh, that would raise $90 million. Charging a dime a drink would raise another $90 million. And between those three measures, not only do we close a budget deficit, we give a huge uh, tax cut to every uh, in the state of New Mexico. Yeah. Thank you. Where do we cut? There aren't many places left, though. Right. Senator Egoff is correct. We have cut many, many programs. We have furloughed employees. We have raised taxes. We have reduced the take-home pay of teachers. And this program has been cut a bit. Everyone needs to take a penalty or to share in the pain. And this, this industry is, is privileged. Not only does it not suffer any reduction, it gets subsidized. Thank you. Senator Becker? Thank you. Um, you know, every major economic expert in the United States says that you never cut or raise taxes in a recession. Uh, what a lot of people are not aware of is that businesses exist so that they can hire people, um, add jobs, um, things of that nature. We can still cut our overhead. We've never had any systemic recurring cuts in our government. So um, business and pay taxes, and um, we have to be very careful about monkeying uh, um, around with the tax uh, for business. Thank you. Uh, Representative Arnold Jones? It's kind of scary, Brian. I think we might agree. Yeah. And, and here's the problem. You know, our tax code is just, it looks like Swiss cheese. It is time to pull back all of the incentives, reduce the gross receipts tax, and then very selectively, marginally target what we're doing so that we have some bona fide results. Everybody wins, including every single small business owner in here. Thank you. Uh, moving on. We... Um, there's been some reference to a tax expenditure budget, which is a list of um, a list of tax credits and, and rebate programs in New Mexico. We do not currently have this in New Mexico. So the next question, uh, which goes to Representative Kintai first, is would you support a tax expenditure budget? Did I miss? Representative, you go. No, he started. This is the fifth question. It is. I think we're I think we're good. Okay. I don't I don't know what you mean by a tax expenditure budget. 
a list, uh, a list of these kind of credits and programs across industries for the whole state. We, we have had that presentation in tax and revenue made a presentation on that in uh, cloud crop in 2009, if I remember right. And they listed, and it's been in other LFC meetings where there's been lists of the different uh, subsidy tax credits that have been in effect, and this is by far the largest state. The other one, next largest, I believe, or maybe the largest, is the not taxing food. Uh, that's the largest. But that, that documentation's been out there for at least two years. I know. So we should look at all of them. Yes. Senator Beffer. Uh, I go back to saying, can the whole state and all of the industries um, look at a review down the line? I say that that's always a fair question. Right now, we are trying to recover from the worst recession that we have had in certainly my time here. Uh, this is not the time to target the gold standard film program in the United States. Uh, so um, down the line, uh, that would be something that would be a good um, procedure. Thank you, Representative Arnold Jones. For all businesses, predictability is really important. I looked at the tax expenditure report. It's 29 pages. Do you think we might have a lot of credits? I can only imagine how much money you're spending chasing the credits, keeping track of what you're doing. Simplification would actually help us sustain this business rather than you chasing the actual accounting costs in each production. Thank you. Representative Eagle. Uh, I do support a tax expenditure budget. Because I think that when you put the film program up against any other tax incentive, uh, it wins against anyone else every day of the week, uh, no matter what. But it's going to bring a new level of accountability and transparency to the $1.25 billion of other tax credits and incentives uh, that the state pursues so that we really know what we're talking about. Uh, it's critical to know where we are, what we're spending our money on, and that's a good first step. Thank you. Um, I think we're ready for the next question. Senator Beffert, this goes to you. The incentives do cost us money, and times are tough. So if we were not to spend this money on the film incentive program, what else could we do to promote a sustainable film industry in New Mexico? You tell me. <laughs> Like I said earlier, uh, decisions are made because of finances. We are not, we don't have the highest credit, nor do we have any of the other mitigating issues that are a lot higher than other states. Companies select states based on um, the finances. And so why, at the, uh, at the heart of our recession, do we want to in any way tamper uh, with this? Um, uh, it's beyond me. And I'd like to say about budgets, uh, we're only looking at the beginning of budgets, this uh, current uh, budget that was put out uh, by our uh, new governor. Uh, it's, it's strictly a starting point. So uh, I'm very optimistic that this is going to be an industry that's going to be proven to be the most handsome expenditure that we have uh, with our tax credits. Thank you. What could we do to promote the industry that doesn't cost money? Uh, you know, it's a really tough one because we have provided schools training, we have provided free equipment, we've provided free locations, we've provided free money and a 25% credit against expenses. There are not too many other places to go. Uh, that being said, the one place that I would look if I was going to expand any place is access to New Mexico filmmakers who are being bycast. Thank you. Representative Eagle? I disagree with the premise of the question. It yeah. assumes that this costs money, that it's a loser for the state. Uh, the state of New Mexico has a net gain as a result of this program. So why would we stop it? Why would we change it? It's working perfectly. 
And, and the, the premise is flawed. The only study that has looked at the New Mexico program based on New Mexico data, top to bottom, soup to nuts, concluded we make $1.50 for every dollar invested in this program. Um, so I just, I just disagree with the premise of the question. Representative Kintyne. Thank you. It's a fundamentally profound question. Janice Arnold Jones here to my left just listed all the things that have been going on for years. And yet we're at this point where if we do not continue the subsidy, everyone says the industry will go away. So this we're, it's like an addiction. It's like being hooked on heroin. We have to keep increasing the dose. Oh, oh, this is not, this is not oh, good public policy oh, to have an industry that dependent. That is the only way we can keep it. Thank you. Folks. Help me out and try to uh, keep your emotional reactions for happy hour after this. You can uh, share them liberally. Lynette, do you have questions that have been chosen? Can you walk them up so I don't have to vanish? <laughs> uh, we will move on to the next question here. Uh, and this is for uh, Representative Arnold Jones. How would you define... Thank you. How would you define a successful program? What uh, proportion of revenue to cost would make it worth it for you? You know, my, uh, the way I define a successful program is not that parameter. Success to me are production companies that are so successful that they are able to provide uh, benefits that are able to fill their own pipelines without relying on the state. That to me defines success, a successful production environment and that includes making sure that we expand that definition not just to film but to every form of media that is available. It is changing so rapidly and that production environment that's where you're rooted right here in the state of New Mexico is what I consider success. Thank you. Representative Eagle? Well, I mean, how do you put a price on uh, the livelihoods of 12,000 people? Yeah. Uh, hello? You know, I mean, it, to, to say that, it's, it's almost as though making a 50% profit on the program isn't enough. Uh, and you want to do more than make a big profit for the state, put tens of thousands of people to work, support uh, scores of small businesses across the state, uh, touch every community in New Mexico. Uh, to me, that's a success. Uh, would I still propose that we proceed if we had uh, less profit? Absolutely. Uh, the state of New Mexico benefits in myriad ways from this program. And that's right. I don't know how to say it again, but we just need to keep it going because it's working. Uh, thank you. Representative I think the standard would be when, this, when the industry is no longer subsidized by the taxpayers. When the industry no longer reaches into the pockets of the working people and takes money out of it, put into their own businesses. Stand on your own. Exist on your own. Don't be dependent <coughs> upon the taxpayers. That would be a success. That would be great. Thank you. Senator Becker. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'd like to define success because I think that New Mexico that has been touted as the gold standard has uh, proven what success is. We have uh, a, a vendor infrastructure that is coveted by all the other states. We have been touted as having the best skilled crew. Yay! Uh, we have a business base that now understands uh, films, and I could go on. Thank you. Thank you. Lynette, I think we're going to have time for more questions from the audience. So if Paul and Eric want to choose three more and filter them up here, I think we'll be able to get to them. But I'm going to move on to one of those now. And this question will go to Representative Kintai. No, Eagle. I think we're in order. There have been problems with film programs in other states. How does New Mexico protect itself from those pitfalls? Well, I think New Mexico has protected itself from those pitfalls. We've got a situation that's set up, it's actually pretty ingenious, uh, where the audits that are done, and Representative Kintai, they are done, uh, the audits are done by the Taxation Revenue Department, not by the Film Office. So you have a Department of Government that has an incentive to minimize the amount paid 
on the applications. Uh, and you don't have a film office that might see the productions as clients trying to maximize the rebate. So that's the first thing that's important. Uh, secondly is the audits themselves. They are incredibly detailed and they are done in such a way so that you are certain that the rebates are paid based on expenditures made to New Mexico companies so that the New Mexico economy benefits directly and so that New Mexico dollars stay right here in New Mexico. Yes. Uh, you know, it's a, Lou Wallace, our territorial governor, said that every calculation based on experience elsewhere fails in New Mexico. This is an instance in which the opposite is true. Uh, because New Mexico has figured this out, and every other state is trying to figure it out. They haven't been able Thank to do it you. yet, and I hope they won't. <laughs> Representative Kim Tai, you have 30 seconds. Sorry, I was distracted there. Um, still learning my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Iowa had an audit done that showed tremendous abuse. Those audits were kept concealed from the public until it was done by the state audit. I cannot get access as a state legislator to what was done. There are people in this room who know about supposed New Mexico residents who have gotten counted in those, uh, shall we say, in-state resident re rebates, rebates, excuse me. That's happened. We've heard about it. Too many of you have come out and reached out to me in private. Thank There's you. There's abuse. Thank you. We'll move on now to uh, Senator Becker. And so we've had some pitfalls that we've tightened up. For instance, in 2005, we passed uh, legislation that tightened up eligibility. There were issues that surfaced. Uh, I like the fact that you do not get your rebate uh, until you produce your receipts. So I, I feel that that is an, uh, an incredible uh, standard. Um, the audits are done by our tax department, not by uh, a film commission uh, itself. So this is an outside uh, secondary um, protection for our citizens. Thank you. Representative Arnold Jones. I have to echo what Representative Kentai says. The number of calls that I've had from New Mexicans who lost out because another transplant with a, a P.O. box was selected over them in, and being reported as a New Mexican. And, you know, the more complicated we make it, the, the easier for this type of abuse to take place. So uh, there, are, there are a number of things that we still have to do to clean it up. Thank you. This question uh, was written for Representative Kintai, but you'll all get a chance to respond to it. And the question is, what do you propose to replace 10,000 jobs and 250 businesses when the film industry evaporates in New Mexico? You have one minute. That's an interesting question. Yeah. After, after $135, $135 million over the last two years, we are told that if we don't continue this subsidy, those jobs will go away. If we'd spent that $135 million on road construction, we would have had 10,000 jobs. And at the end, we would still have roads. Uh, we will have nothing if the industry leaves. As far as the 10,000 jobs, I'd like to draw your attention briefly to the Albuquerque Journal. When the Albuquerque studio was being uh, in going into foreclosure, if you look at the sidebar, it lists the number of employees as 12. The 12,000 number and the thousands of numbers are being thrown around are not supported in any economic study. No, anecdotally, and advocates for this industry, but the neutral economic observers say that this data does not exist. Thank you. And Senator Beffert, you have 30 seconds. So 10,000 jobs um, would be a, a real difficult challenge after we have 89,000 unemployed currently. Yeah. Uh, we know for a fact, an audible fact, that there are 2,000 or three, uh, over 2,000, I've heard it's 3,000 direct jobs uh, in this last year, supply chain jobs over 3,000. Uh, that doesn't count uh, travel agencies that have over 30% of their business uh, with this industry. It doesn't count hotels, uh, other things that are indirect. And I think it would be a sad day uh, for that um, to happen. That's right. Thank you. Representative, 
Arnold Jones, did I start with you or is it your... Uh... I have a question. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I have to quote uh, my friend Eric Witt, and he was on KOB reminding us that there are about 3,000 jobs. And so this number 10,000, let's, let's be real, but what bothers me, and let's get back to kind of the fairness in what's happening. The number of individuals who then, when they finish a project, go to unemployment is a little frightening. And so for me, success, again, is sustained employment with benefits. And that 10,000 number just doesn't cut it, doesn't get there. Thank you, Representative Eagle. Well, I'm sure everybody noticed what uh, we heard an answer from the opponents, which was nothing. Uh, there's a demonstration of a lack of understanding about how employment That's in the industry right. works. Uh, it is not a nine to five job. It is yes. temporary or seasonal from production to production with intervals of unemployment in between. That's how it is everywhere, not just in New Mexico. Um, and the idea of that these jobs can be replaced in this recession is just out there. There's no way to do it. Thank um, you. All right, we've got two questions left, and we're going to move through these, and then we'll do some closing statements. This one, we'll start with you, Senator Befford. Shouldn't economic development incentives be used to stimulate emerging high-growth industries rather than flat or sunset industries like film location production? You have a minute? Well, naturally, if New Mexico was operating in a vacuum, I guess that would be the perfect <laughs> But uh, we are not. And just like other high-tech industries and other industries, these companies go to the states they feel have the best financial outlook for them. And I go back to saying that movies are selected and, and ad, uh, advertisements and so on, not because we have beautiful mountains, because it's done on sound stages. All states uh, have these same amenities. Uh, so, uh, I go back to saying uh, this is not as simple as just saying we, um, if we do X or we do Y, everything will be fine because uh, static um, uh, predictions of that nature, I think, are uh, naive. Yeah. Thank you. Representative Arnold Jones. Well, the economic development track record is not particularly good in our state. Um, we have a number of, of high-tech companies that have, that have uh, located at Mesa del Sol. They're not there anymore. And, and so is this as worthy an industry as any other one? You bet it is. Uh, but again, I'm going to go back to that model. How much and for how long should your industry be sustained by the taxpayer? You know, I go to McDonald's, I pay a bucket for a cup of coffee. This industry pays 75 cents we got to find a little bit. Thank you. Representative Eagle? <coughs> Absolutely. I agree that the state should be supporting innovative industries and not supporting stale old ones, which is why we should stop giving away $400 million every year to old industries that don't need it, and why we should keep continuing to support a growing, vibrant, gold standard industry right here in New Mexico, the film business. I mean, that's a very simple answer, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I, I believe economic development can only come when you have litigation reform, regulation reform, budget tax reform, and infrastructure reform. You do not get any economic development by spreading tax dollars around like Tinkerbell spitting pixie dust. We have done too much of that, and it's all gone for nothing. Eclipse Aviation, Green 2B, the list goes on and on. We can't do that. We cannot waste any more taxpayer money. Thank you. Excuse me. And my job is in a waste. Ma'am. It's not. The last question we have here will go to Representative Arnold Jones. I think. Am I off? Let's go with it. The money to make movies, uh, i.e. to pay employees and vendors, comes from outside the state. Even were New Mexico to rebate 30 cents of every dollar, doesn't the state benefit from the 70 cents left behind, which goes for gas, mortgages, clothes, goods, and services, all of which are taxed? You have one minute. Yeah. You know, anytime you have economic activity, it's a good thing. And if we have such robust activity, you have to then ask, why do we need such a subsidy? And that becomes that chicken and egg theory. 
Um, and so we're, we're really debating at what level are we going to do this. Do we benefit when the money comes from outside the state? Of course we do. Uh, do I think it's going to completely dry up and blow away? I don't, because the people in this room are creating a vibrant community, and the reason that people are going to come here has everything to do with your talent, and much less to do with some of the money that we're offering. And I want to go back to one of the film loan programs that we have. Has anybody in this room actually been able to get one of the film loans? You see, that really bothers me. It really bothers me. And so there's some structural things that we still need to do. And so it's not just about the rebate. It's about the whole program. No, but some of us Thank you. On Representative Eagle. Uh, well, I think the answer to the question is yes. 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 Right? Uh, this is, this is this, these are out-of-state dollars flowing into New Mexico. It is a net gain. <clears throat> The rebate program that we have in place is modest and in comparison to other states, it's supported by an enormous infrastructure that's, that works well and is successful. Uh, all these out-of-state dollars staying in New Mexico uh, are a benefit. So I suppose if the premise of the question is accepted, then the answer would be yes, but uh, I think 25% is perfectly adequate. Thank you. Representative Kintai? This is a fundamental example of the problem with this debate. Economic activity is not the same as tax dollars. We're taking money out of the public treasury to subsidize an industry and trying to equate them. They are not the same. Because people come in here and spend some money doesn't mean that the money gets back to the treasury. In fact, through analysis after analysis after analysis by solid economists all over the U.S. show the tax base does not get enriched. The, the tax the tax dollars do not get back to the Treasury. The Treasury is poor, and so as a result, we cut services. Thank you. We're going to move now. Um, you know, if you can Sorry, say, Senator. I need to stand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at this. I'm terrible at this. Forgive me, please. 30 seconds. We'll give her 40. I'll give you a minute. That's the question. Kidding. I think uh, would people be better off to raise the subsidy? I don't think anyone's asking to raise. What I'm saying is, this is the absolute wrong time to start yes. in any way showing uh, any type of instability with the leading industry that we have in our state currently today. That's right. Um, this is not the good time. I worry that the 119 movies that we had this last year, what would happen if we start in any way showing instability? There'll be zero. Thank you very much. And uh, I thank you for your indulgence with my uh, order of things. We're going to move to the closing statements now, and each of you will have one minute. Uh, we'll start with Representative Eagle, and we will move on from there. Well, everything we hear from the opponents of the program uh, is theoretical. When it comes to common sense air protections that go after our air, that, that seek to protect our air, land, and water that come up in the legislature. They're fought tooth and nail by the same crew that opposes the film program on the basis that it might someday, somewhere, somehow, cost somebody a job. But when it comes to the film program, it has been demonstrated to have created thousands of jobs and have generated hundreds of millions of dollars of benefit for the state of New Mexico. Uh, that same defense of maybe one job somewhere, someday, somehow, is out the window. And this program is unfairly singled out and attacked in a way that you don't see anywhere else. You don't see any of the opponents of the film program complaining about the hundreds of millions of dollars that flow to the industries in their part of the state and the industries that support them uh, and help to get them elected. Uh, it is an incredible double standard, and I'm looking forward to this debate continuing in the upcoming sessions so that we can explain to even more people the great benefits the film program has brought, brought to our state and will continue to bring to New Mexico. Representative <laughs> This is the only industry in this state that has its favored status. 25% of all production costs get rebated by the state treasury. This is money that comes away from the taxpayers of the state. This is money that does not go into schools. This is money that does not pay for policemen. This is money that does not pay for 
paper coins. This is a drain on the public treasury. This is not an asset for the state. The study after study after study by serious economists show this is bad economic policy. Is it good for a few individuals? Absolutely. Do some individuals benefit? Absolutely. Is it popular? You bet. Is it powerful? Oh, trust me, I know. It is powerful beyond belief. Very powerful. That does not make it right. It's bad public policy. We can't afford it. We're hurting as a state. We have to face up to the reality. This is not good for the citizens of this state. Thank you. Senator Becker. So this is a very healthy debate. And this is putting the issue right front and center as to the uh, importance of the film industry. I would counter some of the remarks by saying, what if we lost that $504 million and the who knows, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 jobs? I will tell you that it has taken this industry years to become the gold standard of, as quoted by L.A. Yeah. in New York. Uh, to uh, get the colleges to start offering animation uh, courses, to get our industry so that we have the best crews in the country. Yes. I, I hear wonderful things about visual effect type uh, training and things of that nature, and I think this is the absolute wrong time to in any way modify or show instability in the most successful program that we have in the state of New Mexico today. You know, having been in this industry for a number of years in California, it's, uh, it's very interesting that we're coming full circle. Uh, the bottom line here is productions are going to go where they need to go. So what are we selling? Are we going to sell off the rate card? You know, if you sell off the rate card, you sell yourselves down the river, then we deserve the reputation that we do have in Los Angeles, which is go to New Mexico, it's easy money. You know, that's not good enough. It's not, it's not easy money. The other side is there is a fairness issue. You know, there are a number of other industries, and I, I'm not going to quibble with the fact that we may have 3,000 people working in sustained positions. I'm grateful. But what about the other industries that are trying to get a leg up? The 25% credit against expenses, that's what it is. It's a credit against expenses. It isn't fair. Thank you. And I would like to thank the rest of you for joining us today on behalf of the Motion Picture Association of New Mexico and the Rio Grande Foundation. We are having a reception in the lobby, and we invite you participants and the media to stay and continue the discussion with us. Thank you.